Hello everybody, what's the crack? Um, as the video suggests, I want to talk about uh, a build that I'm doing. So it's a mountain bike frame. I'm putting a 3000 watt rear hub motor into it. I'm pairing that with a 72 volt 20 amp hour battery and a Sabaton controller. Now, I bought my entire kit off of um, a supplier on Alibaba. And if I can figure out how to do it, this is my first ever YouTube video, then I'll put a link below in the description uh to that supplier but I, I you know you can use whatever supplier you like so i'm after running into a couple of little things that i thought you know i'll do a little video on because it may help other people um and there's some stuff that i don't think is talked about enough um that that like it's definitely going to become a problem for you if you go with 3000 now i suppose the question people would ask is why am i building a 3000 watt um when all of these videos online people are using 2000 and they're they're having loads of fun and they're getting great range and you know and there's other people that have a thousand watt motors and 1500 watt motors and to be honest um i have no reason for doing this only that it's what i want to do right so there's a guy that i follow on youtube called uh, dude stuff and he has a really good he's a really good channel actually and i think he said it best he said that uh when he looks at forum posts and he looks at replies to his youtube videos about bigger motors it's always from people that don't have an e-bike and that's me guys i don't have an e-bike but but i'm gonna go with the 3000 watt motor what i'd hate is if i built like a 2000 watt system and i'm sitting back afterwards looking at it thinking i wonder what it'd be like to have extra power and um i'm not a small guy you know i'm i'm like i'm probably twice the weight of some of these young lads i see riding the 2000 watts so i, I figured then i go with 3000 watt i'll i get good, good fun out of it so anyway one of the one of the problems that I came up against that I think you may you may face and maybe you won't but definitely with my supplier was um and I the, the, the I want to put gears on my bike so I want to put like um like a seven speed system on the bike so the back of my bike will have one of these it's a screw on freewheel and it'll have like seven options for gearing but the supplier that I was buying it off of was telling me that. Uh, for a standard dropout size for a mountain bike, which is 135 mil, then you could only go with a freewheel. So this this little guy, so one single uh, gear system. So that's no good for me because I was thinking like, see if I, if I, if I build this, like at the end of the day, it's an electronic system. I blow a fuse, I could short out a wire, something's gonna go wrong. These things don't go forever. But the day that it does fail on me, I wanna be able to cycle the bike home. So yeah, like the bike is going to be wicked heavy. It's going to be it's going to be a huge weight, but I but I was thinking like I'm going to put a double chain set on the front and I'm going to put like that seven speed system on the back that they offer. I might actually do a few videos later because I'm going to try and swap that out for eight. Anyway, I'm going to put a seven speed system on the back, so I've load a big range of gearing. So that if something does go wrong, I just like oh, it's grand. I don't want to be stuck. I want to use this for work as well. And then the last thing I want is to be stuck on the way to work and have to push my bike or be walking my bike up the road. That, that, not going to work for me so the problem then i had was that i i had to go with a 150 mil dropout spacing now i know a lot of you probably know right but what a dropout is and i'll just show you here on this bike right what a dropout is is it's this so so if you look this is the this is the, that's the saddle that's the back wheel so the back wheel slots in here and these little these little things here are called dropouts you see them yeah right and your dropout spacing, there's your chain stays, is the distance here. That's where the back wheel fits in there, yeah? So that's your dropout spacing. So any kind of a standard bike that you have, the likelihood is it's 135. Now there's all different sizes, the older mountain, the older racing bikes are different sizes. But pretty much, if you're gonna buy a mountain bike today, it's gonna to be 135, right? So that, that, that's not gonna work, 150. Now I, 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 I've seen, I've seen videos of legs online and they stretch them. So they catch the chain stays, and they actually stretch it apart and squeeze in the wheel. No, I would not recommend that. I would actually say, I've, I've seen other horror videos on YouTube where people have cracked their chains. This You're putting a lot of power into the back of this bike at 3000. Even if you're putting in a 2000 watt, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be stretching aluminium. It's not designed to be stretched. Now that does give you an option that you'll see a lot of people online talk about, um, but they, they kind of miss out on one factor. They all say, use a steel frame you can stretch out a steel frame and you can you can stretch you can stretch out a steel frame there's actually a video i'll try and put the link in below again if i figure this thing out i'll do it but um there's a guy called the rj the bike guy and what he uses is he uses a piece of treaded bar something like this so he puts a treaded bar and he has washers at each side and he has bolts at each side 
and he just twists the bolts and it stretches the frame. But you can only do that with a steel frame, right? So you can stretch out a steel frame. The problem with using an old steel frame is you're probably not going to get hydraulic brakes. And for me, hydraulic brakes were kind of a must. Um, like I, 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 want, um, I want the best braking possible. Um, I don't have the, the nerve I probably had when I was younger for riding these bikes. So yeah, I want the thing to stop when I need it to stop. So anyway, the solution I've came up with is I did a lot of searching and I'm after finding um, online that there is a standard in the mountain bike industry called Boost, right? And what the boost standard is, it's where the mountain bike industry created wider dropouts so that they could have a different angle on the spokes. And um, by having that angle or spoke, then it means a stronger wheel. So it's marginal gains. If you're if you're into cycling or you buy any cycling kit, you'll see that they're constantly making tiny little tweaks and changes to try and get money out of our pockets. And I have a feeling boost is one of those for the lads in, in the mountain bike world. But what it did do is you have an Lads, if there's any of you into mountain bikes and I'm getting this wrong, I could just tell you what I figured out and what I bought. But it seemed to me like there was two sizes. There was a 140 and a 150. Now, 140 was, that, that's that's better. Now we're getting close to what I need, which is 150. However, be very, very, very careful with Boost. So what you want is Boost QR. So that's Boost Quick Release, right? So a quick release are those, I don't have one here beside me to show you, but a quick release is one where you just snap the little, the little, the little flick uh, thing there's a cantilever system and the wheel drops out so it's not bolted so uh but the other one that you have to be wary of is boost um true axle so a true axle is where you don't actually have a dropout anymore you have an enclosed circle on each side and you push an axle through that will not work for what we need you, you can't use uh true axles but uh, but that's only that's only simply like looking at if you're thinking of buying a new frame now i'm not saying everyone's going to be able to buy a new frame but if you are buying a frame just make sure you, you you measure the dropouts. If it's an aluminium and it's not and it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So my so fortunately for me, I found a bike with boost quick release. That means that's the bike, the red one I just showed you there. And that has uh, the dropouts. And interestingly enough, with quick release, they actually make it a little bit wider because what the quick release does is they say it's a cantilever system and they want it to squeeze. So actually, when you measure boost quick release, it's actually 142 mil. So now I'm only stuck for eight mil, which is fantastic. I mean, like I'm still not going to stretch my frame out by eight mil. I know that's only four mil each side, but I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I actually have a plan, and I might do a further video. I don't have my wheel back from China yet, but um, my rear hub water. But I'm thinking like there is a collared section on those axles. I'm thinking of of just of just maybe shaving that down, foiling a little bit. Anyway, I don't know. I'm only I'm talking I'm talking blindly here now because I haven't seen it. But I'm definitely going to do some kind of manipulation on that to get it to just fit into my bike perfectly okay so that's what i've done i went with boost qr 142 mil um i'm only stuck for eight four mil each side and i have a plan for that the last thing i'll talk about is um and and then i let it go the last thing i'm going to talk about is um torque gowns so I started watching videos and at the beginning I didn't even with the 3000 like there's no there's no there was no video where anyone talked about the danger of not putting in a strong torque arm system into a bike with that kind of water on it now um you might be asking the question like you know like surely people have bought 3000 5000 there's loads of different size motors but all of those ones are, they go into like if you look online and you see enduro frames so they're like this um they're like these bicycles but they come with um, like a steel box section on the front and they have swing arms and those motors are designed to fit into those. They're not, I don't think anything above kind of 2000 is designed. You should be going into a, a mountain bike, but you can do it. You actually can. And that's what I'm going to show you. That's what I'm doing. So it means that I'm going to have to make my own torque gown. Now I'm going to show you, this is what usually comes. If you, you'll say online or the supplier will supply you with a torque gown. What they're going to supply you with is one of these little things. Okay, so you'll see these all over YouTube and what they do, is this goes over your axle so your axle comes out through here and this goes over it and then this little arm slots on like this and it goes over onto your chain stay and it 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 they actually use these little bends and they just bend it on no so they use one of these so i won't show you that there's no need just look it up look at torque gown and you'll see loads of videos of leads fitting torque gowns to the bike that's not going to be strong enough for a 3000 watt motor not 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 in my opinion maybe maybe look if you're a small like i don't i don't know maybe lighter legs get away I'm, I'm not doing it so what i am doing is i'm after getting myself this piece of steel 
and I'm actually going to make my own one that's a pretty chunky piece of kit and I'm going to mold the back of my bike I'm going to mold I'm going to do mold for the dropouts and I'm going to make a piece of steel and I'm going to make a perfect fit piece of steel that goes in there so that there's absolutely no pressure on those dropouts at all that this steel plate's taking out of pressure so that'll be maybe the next video if there's interest in this video then uh, as I go on I'll do that video um, and maybe then if, if, if people want to see it I might do um, a trip out on the road so anyway for now thanks for watching the video boost QR that's how I got over the problem I haven't seen anyone else talk about it um, yeah and I'll continue doing videos if people are interested all right thanks for watching um, see you all later